So this came the other day from the Penn family in the U.S. Um, they've decided to become the distributor for Mr. Cypress or the agent. I'm not sure what the term is um, for Mr. Cypress, which is based in Taiwan for the USA. The reason why I bought it from the Penn family and not from Mr. Cypress directly is because the Penn family issued a discount code. And after calculating for shipping fee, uh, exchange rates with the discount code, it is more or less um, just slightly cheaper, just slightly, not by much. Um, so yeah, so it is this particular pen here. Uh, I believe this was made of some kind of fiberglass that is used to make um, aircrafts. And so initially I thought it was ebonite for some reason because I have uh, something similar made of polished, I think it's German ebonite, I, I can't remember. But I'll, I'll put a link up here for you to have a look at it. And it's of similar sort of this layered block that they then turn into a pen. When I opened this, it came in uh, like this fruit sleeve. It's not really, I don't think that's a technical term for it. But I often see this sleeve in fruit, believe it or not, to keep the fruit from bruising. So it came like this in this lovely um, bamboo box, which I believe is standard for Mr. Cypress. And it has this... Um, magnet sort of closure so you it closed secured like so um, as you can see it's very secure in this good well-packed um, styrofoam box thing here and a warranty issued that doesn't fit the box but and there is this padding here which um, is a lovely sort of velvet-like padded. The pen came, oh, there's a sleeve, which I completely missed. Uh, so there's a sleeve there, I'll leave it there. Uh, the pen came sort of rattling around um, here like this, but you know, I wasn't too concerned because according to the write-up, this particular material is very scratch uh, resistant, uh, given that it was designed or it was used for aircraft, you can imagine. So it sort of sit like so and it, um, sort of rattle around a little bit, but you do have the, um, there, you have this, if you could secure it, if you want to do that. Okay, so that's pretty secure. So that's the packaging, very well packaged, very well thought out. And when I first hold the pen, I was surprised by the heft. It felt really dense and heavy. And I did think that it felt like holding more like the consistency of glass than you do plastic. And of course, when I read what it's made of, it makes complete sense. And so I ordered, um, I believe the section here is black and I much prefer it. I think you could ask for it to be made of the same uh, multicolored material here i will i can't remember the name of the model i'll put the details down below i am not affiliated with the pen family or with mr cypress and this is my first mr cypress pen i have been eyeing a mr cypress for a while it just things have been a bit hectic and i have other priorities and so i choose the music nib i have lately been exploring wider and wider nibs and i have discovered, as I suspected, that given that I tend to write in block letters, that uh, stub nibs and music nibs, which is essentially, well, I think a stub nib is essentially a music nib. Someone let me know what the real difference is. Uh, let me just try to do this, I'm not quite sure. So the two holes is uh, allowing a little bit it's not a flex nib but it's just a lot more generous ink going in there instead of feeding through one is fed through two and um it has ebonite feed which i to be honest can't distinguish between um i'm pretty new to ebonite feed so maybe one day i'll be able to feel it a bit more and it's 14 carat yovo nib uh, marked with Mr. Cypress's logo there. So let's try, I have done some uh, scribbling here and let me put this back first. So I've used the 
Sailor collaboration with Tintarias. I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. Called Spicy Chipotle. Again, pardon my pronunciation in advance. So as you can see, this is the first, first um, scribble. It looks really dark, almost black. And this is a collaboration between Sailor and Tintarias. I call it spicy chipotle, as I've mentioned. And it is the the color of red beans. So if you have ever eaten refried red bean, it's that kind of reddish, bluish, brown. And in a certain light in the bottle, when I tilted the ink, I actually saw a hint of blue, a hint of green. And um, I don't know if you can see, a little bit of it on my finger um, it's completely washed away now but I have a photo of it somewhere which I may insert here um, it's actually pink you can see a little bit of it left there uh, when I wipe my fingers what was left of the brown ink was this bright pink color so imagine pink green and blue underneath the brown and I just love Sailor's ink for this. I know there are other ink that um, ink makers who create such um, sophisticated and very multi-dimensional. Um, what's the term? Chromatography, I think it's called. Uh, but my current experience has been limited to a few um, inks are not my area of exploration just yet but i think i'm beginning to after two years of focusing on the pens and the nibs i'm finally exploring inks uh, sadly the spicy chipotle is no longer made they only make 300 bottles and i'm very very sad to say that they won't be making any more um tentarias i believe is a spanish speaking podcast about ink and such that is based in the US. And so the website is in Spanish and apparently they're going to issue another collaboration this year or next year. So um, again, I'm not sponsored and um, I do hope that we can persuade Sailor to do a variety or a, a variation of something like this um, without violating the terms and services of an agreement with Tintarias, of course. Uh, you do want something to be unique when you say it's unique. I do apologize for this inner city noises that I myself am still getting used to, even though for the longest time I actually live in the city. So I'm going to uh, give you a very very um very comfortable this combination of this ink this nib and this paper this is um the Haubonichi Tomoe River paper which um some of you have commented that it's too thin or that Haubonichi needs to do better with the paper and another person mentioned it reminds them of toilet paper and to you all I say this paper is not for you. Um, this is a highly specialty, specialized paper for people who love writing with water-based ink as well as watercoloring. Um, it is made um, based on the ancient paper of uh, a lot of parts of Asia. I call them coated rice paper because it is effectively rice paper that's coated. 
So I'll just do this, uh, do the usual. So it, it the, I don't know whether this is a, a music nip thing or whether it is this particular nip thing. The start is always a little bit, I have to press a little bit more. So it's probably just me getting used to music nip, but maybe it's a particular characteristic of this nip, I'm not sure. But let's do the usual A. See what, you see what I mean? I have to press a little bit. Um. I'll press it a little bit, just a little bit of flex. I don't think you would want to um, push this too far. And the curve. Um, we'll see if... So it's a pretty, oh, I do apologize. This is, oh my God, the noises. Anyway, um, so that is the Mr. Cypress Cadence, I think the, the name of this is multicolored version of the model. There's a monochromatic ones. And the ink is Tintarias and Sailor Spicy Chipotle. Hold on, let me grab you the mini bird. There it is. And it came with this one here. And I wish I bought more. I saw f this first on um, Simone's video. And I knew I liked it straight away because it has this sort of red hint of a brown that I couldn't quite put my finger on. And I really like inks that I can't put my finger on. So if you have one that you don't really like, you decide that you don't like the spicy chipotle please dm me on instagram at to my bookshelf and i'll be glad to buy it off you so next video i'll show you my collection of ink bye